that yes are applicable even today. Music, you know, you take these oh, wait, different. I think now we're live. Okay, we just went live. Okay, how's everybody doing? <laughs> Good to uh, see everybody. I'm like Michael Scott, I think, man, uh, where I get it right the second time. <laughs> <laughs> and Shauna goes, okay, now we're live. <laughs> so uh, how's everybody doing? Yeah, it's still me. Yeah. <laughs> Those of you who watch The Office know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, welcome. Who's watching? Uh, let us know. Hey, um, you know, whatever, let us know what country you're from and uh, maybe a little bit about yourself as a musician, if you're a beginner or if you read notes, if you don't read notes, kind of your experience of playing and any questions or comments you might have, anything at all. Doesn't have to be about piano. As you can see today, I'm dressed up in green and gold for our Baylor Bears. Haven't been to the Final Four in, I think, 71 years. Oh, and they're, so, they're past the Final Four now. Yeah, right. Now, past the Final Four, right, to the championship game. And that's today. So uh, we're excited. We're rooting on our, our Baylor Bears. Got a great team. And so it's going to be a lot of fun tonight watching the game. And I hope you guys are, are watching it too. Anyway. Uh, so if you're out there watching, let us know. We can, uh, you know, comment live. Shauna's in the control room, so she's uh, monitoring that. Got a great lesson for you today. We're going to do some Chopin. I kind of balked everyone out, I think. So much Bach. Uh, and we're going to switch gears and do Chopin. And I think also my family's tired of listening to Bach. Bach is really, you know, can be cerebral, and it takes, you know, attention, and it kind of is exhausting sometimes because there's, you know, so I much going like if, on at once. If I'm not paying attention to it, it just feels a little bit like noise. <laughs> but I don't mean that in a bad way. I just yeah. mean I'm not always, an, I can't sit and pay attention. Yeah, especially when I've, I've been playing those fugues. So they're, um, you know, three and four voices going on at one time. So it's not good background music all the time, I don't think. Anyway, so we're going to do some Chopin today. And Chopin is so applicable to music today. In fact, you know, you can pick any composer, any music. It's all, you know, relatable. Um, we're just recycling the same stuff with different instruments, different voices, different styles. But the music itself remains the same. It really is. There's just 12 tones on the piano. There's seven notes in the scale. That doesn't change. All right, so someone's asking, uh -huh. what music do you like? Ooh, it depends on, <laughs> what you know, doing. what mood I'm in. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, you know that, that uh, we were talking about the office earlier, that little desert island, you know, what we, you're like, what do you get, three books, three movies or something? Oh, that, yeah, yeah. Like that. If I were to pick, you know, three composers or whatever, one composer, that'd be hard, you know, because sometimes I'm in the mood for Bach, and then sometimes I'm in the mood for Beethoven, sometimes I'm in the mood for Chopin or uh, Schumann, uh, but, but Bach, Beethoven and Chopin are my top three. If I had to pick three, it would be those three, and they would, you know, you suffice. You pick anything else? You'd pick me. only classical? Yeah. No, if, if, you know, sometimes I'm in a, another mood, you know, but it would be, you know, Elton John, of course, and Billy Joel. They're my top two piano guys. Um, Billy Joel, Elton John, without, without a doubt, you know. If I had to pick one out of those two, I'd probably be Elton. Um, I think I can pull off a Billy Joel song better, maybe, but I enjoy Elton more, and I enjoy all the stuff he does, you know, just playing-wise. He's, a, as a live performer, nobody beats him, and so probably Elton at the top. Uh, so Elton is like my Bach of the <laughs> pop rock world, you know? <laughs> yeah. How about you guys? So whoever asked that question, what, what would your... Wooter like 70s and 80s. 70s and 80s, me too. You know, I like... Um, you know, 70s, 80s, I like 90s too. Um, then after that, I really don't care much after that, you know. There's some good bands, but 70s, 80s, 90s, 60s are okay, uh, but definitely 70s, 80s, 90s are my thing. I like 90s music because um, I, I used to work out a whole lot. You know, I, I was actually buff at one time. <laughs> <laughs> and they always had the 90s music going on in the gym. And I think that 90s music... Was it music, in the 90s? What? Was it in the 90s? It was in the 90s, yes. <laughs> the other 90s. And... <laughs> I was just, you know, it gets me in the mood to work out. It gets me in the mood to, you know, have energy. So it just makes me remember that feeling. You know how music does that, you know, where it takes you back immediately? Well, I just have that energy of the, of the 90s. And so if I'm working out on the Peloton bike, I like, I look for 90s rock because nothing, you know, pumps me up more than the 90s rock. But I love 80s because that's when I was growing up. We had that on in the car. And, you know, it's just cool. 
it's kind of weird too, isn't it? If you step back, 80s music is kind of weird compared to to the, seven, the decade before and the decade after. Yeah. Um, what else, Shauna? <laughs> I mean, Phil's here. He says you should hey, check out Chaz Hodges. Check out Chaz Hodges. Hodges? Who is that? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure an artist. Yeah. Chaz Hodges. Not familiar with that that artist. Yeah. I'm one of those who, I don't know every artist, but the ones I do know, I know really well. Uh, but I don't. I don't know every artist, but thanks for that. Ah, uh, Kevin said Fleetwood Mac. I would agree. Kevin Fleetwood Mac. Thanks, Kevin, for that. Yes, definitely. I mean that Rumors album. If I just want to, you know, rock out and enjoy myself, that's I put on that album. Um, love their. I don't stuff. know if I'm rocking out, but I do if I crank it up. You know. Oh yeah. Well, you're talking about hard rock because we we like the Black Crows. So yeah, if you're really gonna rock, <laughs> rock and roll, Black Crows. My favorite album is the first two, I think, Shauna, I like, because I like, they really do that gospel blues stuff in that second album, so I really enjoy that. Um, but we're going to get to our lesson here in a minute, and look, kind of look at some chords. We're actually going to, you know, have a lesson, and even if you're not able to play this, you'll still learn something from watching it, and uh, it'd be really neat if some of you guys learn to play part of this and can send me a recording of yourself, you know, a video. Um, either upload it to you, you know, you can upload it anywhere and you can send me the link and then I can, can, can see it, but we'll get to that in just a second. Any more questions or comments before we, well, um, Ben is here with us. He said, where should music theory beginners ask more involved questions and get quality answers from knowledgeable people, specifically music theory and or composition forums? Do you know of anything? Wow. Uh, well, you can always ask me right here. <laughs> <laughs> I give you some answers. I'm pretty knowledgeable in theory. In fact, I used to tutor music theory. It was kind of something that comes really easy to me. And so in college, I was a, a tutor for that stuff. And I kind of taught it in a whole different way. I think the traditional way of teaching it is kind of dry and boring and kind of complicated. So I had a kind of different angle going at it. And, um, you know, so you can ask me right here if you got a question. Uh, but I don't know of any forums or anything like that. I know I know I do know I have some theory lessons on webpianoteacher.com that people just love. Uh, and then I also started a new uh, theory lesson series using the Beatles music because I like it to make it I like to make it fun, I like to apply it, you know. It ain't enough just to know, you know, this is a one chord, this is a four chord, this is the function of, you know, harmonies within a key. I like to show you that in a song. So I use Beatles music to do that. And what's really cool is they don't even, they didn't know theory. They didn't read music. They didn't know what they were doing. Yet they have some of the coolest chord progressions and things harmonically that you've ever heard. So I love using their songs um, to show theory stuff. But yeah, I have something on the website for that. WTP, WPT University at the top, if you'll click that, um, it'll take you to that, that series. Anyway, but if you got a question you want to ask right now, go, go ahead for it. I'll, I'll uh, answer the best I can. Good question. Um, and as we're talking about, you know, theory composition, people think that theory is going to help their composition. You know, theory will help you um, understand your composition, but I don't think it helps a whole lot in actually composing. It does a little bit, but when you're composing, when you're when you're really composing something, that comes from the heart, from uh, uh, spontaneity, from intuition, from instinct, and the things that will come out you know, will we'll be from that area, from the creative part of you, not necessarily the analytical part that's analyzing music theory. So if you're looking for theory to make you a better composer, it, it kind of can, but really that's going to come from, look at all the people that can, that compose that don't read music, that don't know theory. In fact, I'm, I knew of a couple of composer, or composers that didn't want to take theory classes because they thought it would mess up their composing. They didn't want to think about it too much. So um, that's my two cents on that. We ready for the lesson yet, Shauna? Okay, wait. Hold on. I think. Okay. Okay. Well, Ben says he thinks his questions might be too involved to ask on YouTube, but he we'll can try. We'll go for it. All right. Okay. So let's uh, maybe get going on the lesson and then. Oh, he's going to try. He hasn't typed it yet. Yeah. Okay. He can think about his question and then we'll try to answer it. Yeah. And anybody else, you got a question? That's what I'm here for. That's what these live lessons are for. Um, I'm using Chopin here. And again, 
Chopin especially is very relatable to music today, chord progressions and and, and the like, but this one's going to be fun. If you're a note reader, you can read this. Uh, if you're not, I put some letters on there. If you can't, you need some little help knowing what the notes are, but everyone, wherever background you come from, you, you can try this and give it your best shot. I think you'll be able to do it. Let's get to it. All right, so uh, at the on the board, I'll turn the piano up a little bit so I can hear it. Okay, so we have this uh, Chopin Mazurka. I think it's Opus 17, number four, I believe. It's kind of jazzy and slow sounding. Isn't that cool? It's just do 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 do, a lot of lazy. You know, we can't really see the treble cat play ah. on the top line. Well, um, no, I may have. We can't. There we go. Well, no. Yeah. Well, it's a, that's just the. Um, I can see it on the overhead. TV. Yeah, I cut it. I cut it a little close there. I'll I'll post this sheet so, you know, people can see. I think I when I scanned it, I cut it a little too close to the top, so that's my fault. I can't get any closer. You mean so, so here's any the farther out? Huh? You can't see it at all. Can you zoom it out? It's too zoomed in. Okay. Can you scroll down? No, that's the top. That's the very top of the page. It's weird. I can see it on the TV. Yeah, it's just I well, that's that's because the, the screen on the piano is is jammed up a little bit, oh. the way we had to do it. So that's my fault. Okay. But I will post this sheet. And you guys will be able to. Oh, someone had a really good question. Okay. When is the next Easy Piano Lesson series going to drop? Easy Piano Lesson series. So they've already completed the fifty. Yeah. It's Have Phil, they really? By the way. Huh? It's Phil. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's a good question. I'm not going to commit to that yet. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, definitely the, the I've Got Rhythm series and the the. I will theory. say we are making a very conscious effort to grow Web Piano Teacher University with yeah. some of those, you know, things like the theory and the rhythm and right. Um, right. So if you have, if you're someone who has finished the Easy Piano Lesson series on the website, you can also look at the I've Got Rhythm series and also the Beatles theory. Uh, those are really helpful too. Those kind of go along with the Easy Piano Lesson series. But the, the next 50 lessons, Bill. Uh, I do plan on that one day. I can't commit to win <laughs> yet at this time. But good question. Phil actually completed all 50, and I actually have his videos on my YouTube channel if you guys want to check that out. He's going through each one and showing his uh, journey as he's learning them and helping. You know, it was a really big uh, help to him to do those. All right, so we have this. Can you see the bass clef at least, Shauna? Yes. Okay, and that's what I want to. And I will post this sheet on my YouTube channel on the community tab. You can just download it, you know, look at it, and you'll have it. But listen to that. Kind of a lazy chord progression. And then you have... Doesn't it sound jazzy? It almost sounds like you could go in a nightclub and hear that if you were. It really does. And Shauna said that last night when I was playing it. And I remember thinking that when I was a kid when I heard this. And that sounds really jazzy, like in a nightclub or something. So as we look at this, and I apologize again, the treble clef being cut off, but you can look at the sheet, you know, on my YouTube channel. Uh, but we. We start off with here with A, B, and F, and the melody here is in the middle. Do you see that? B, C, D, B, C, D, B, C, D, D, D E, B, C, so a D, E, D, C. So the melody is kind of hidden within it, but you can hear it if you listen. So, D, and then we start the melody. Now Chopin, as we switch to the side camera, <laughs> wrote um, a lot of things in 3-4. One, two, three, a lot of waltzes. One, two, three. Scherzos are in 3-4. Um, Mazurkas are in 3-4. And he just wrote, you know, the, even the nocturnes and everything are in, you know, um, divisions of three, even if it's 12-8 or something else. Um, he, 
is, was a native of Poland, and he was forced out from the Napoleonic Wars, forced out of Poland. Always wanted to go back, never got to go back, I don't think. Um, and he had actually a, a cup of Polish dirt that he had with him. But all of his music was, was very uh, folk uh, grounded. So a lot of it comes from the dances they had um, in, in Poland. Just the little folk, you know, stuff they would, would play and dance to. And um, that's where all this, this comes from. So a lot of it has its roots in that, um, just the, the folk music of the country he came from. So that's what we have right here. This, it's a mazurka. He would play in the salons of Paris, which is kind of like nightclubs, you know, back then. So they'd go in and uh, they'd have, you know, someone playing music, except the music wasn't rock and roll. It was this kind of stuff. And you had Chopin and Liszt and um, uh, Schumann and Mendelssohn and the others just playing salon music. But anyway, so we get to the melody here, back to the board, and we have just beautiful. And even if you're a beginner pianist, you can do this. I'm going to help you. All right, so we just played the beginning. Just beautiful, isn't it? Now, let's look at the left hand first. We have A, D, F. The F and the A are tied, so you have a D in the middle. Then you have two more of those chords, A, D, F. That's a D minor chord, right? D, F, A. Just inverted. It's got an A on the bottom. D minor. And then we switch to A in the middle. Now, there's a little trick I always tell you guys. Look for the notes that stay the same, and then the ones that change will stick out. And so there it is. You change the middle note to C, A, C, F. And then you have G, C, F. So right here, what's the note that changes? The bass note goes to G. And then the C changes to a B, while the F and the G stay on the top and bottom. So here's a perfect example of what I always tell you guys. Look at the note that changes. Keep the ones that stay the same. D minor, F chord, suspended chord, G7. Okay? The right hand goes like this. Do, 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 do. Just a beautiful singing melody. In fact, Chopin was known as the poet of the piano. He wrote for, uh, he tried writing in other, for other instruments, you know, um, he wrote a couple of piano concertos, and he tried other things, but piano solo was his main thing, and he was very, very good at it. I think he knew that. Um, but he, he could write these singing melodies in the piano, and it's really hard to sing on the piano because the piano is a percussive instrument, right? But somehow he would write melodies that just sang, and that's one of his, one of his great qualities. As we get back to the board, we'll learn this melody. B, C, D. I know you can't see it. I apologize for that. And again, the sheet is on, will be uploaded to my community tab on my YouTube channel. And next time I'll remember to, when I scan to leave a little space at the top so you guys can see. B, C, D, A, A, C, B, C, D, E, F, G, D, E. Now you can see that one, right, Shauna? Yeah. You can see that one yeah. there. Okay, so if I put hands together and I have, take your time. Sorry. And then this one. Something else you can realize is that I'm doing a, what's called a tempo rubato. Rubato is kind of a free-flowing tempo where you kind of ride waves up and down. So it's not a strict tempo like, a, you know, like you would... Some people think Bach is strict tempo. That's really not, but it's more strict than this. But you definitely don't want to stay um, metronomic. You kind of just, you know, as you want to, play with the tempo a little bit. Stretch it, and then compress it and stretch it again, wherever you feel like doing it. That's why I love Chopin, because there's so much room for expression, personal expression, in his music. All right? So get back, get back to the board. Let's look at left hand here, these knee chords. G, B, E, right? E minor. Now, what's the note that changes? Well, there's actually two of them. The top stays the same. The E stays the same. The bottom two go to F sharp, A sharp. Isn't that a beautiful chord? And then the top moves down to D sharp. So we have all black keys there. Okay? The, this F and A are still sharp because those two were. Right? Sometimes the big hurdle is just reading the notes, right? F, A, E flat. When you have a thumb on a black key, you want to... Slide the other fingers in between the black keys like that. See? And then you change the top note to D, and we have it. Next measure is an E7, E, G sharp, D. 
whole lot of music theory right here. A, E, D. And then we change the middle note to B. And then a low A. And we go back to our D minor chord, A, D, F. A, C, F. Before we learn the right hand on this, do we have that question yet, Shauna, from? No. Not yet? Okay. All right. I was going to take a little break and <laughs> answer a theory question. Somebody asked if this was pre-recorded, and I joked and said, if you know us, uh, you know we barely pre no. think through anything. On the seat of our pants, yeah. <laughs> By the seat of our but pants. But then they <laughs> said, how do you talk and type at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can't do that. Shauna can do that. Yeah, and people, also for people who have been following us for a while that, or haven't been following us, I'm Shauna, Sean's wife. Yes. I get a lot of emails which make me laugh every time they, where people assume I must be your um, daughter. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that much older than you. Yeah. No. All right. So as you're learning this. What is this Chopin piece again? This is, it's, it's the 13th Mazurka in a-Z-U-R-K-A, because he wrote, it's a type of dance, a Polish dance, a mazurka. Um, I think it's Opus 17, number four, I think. Yeah, so it's one of the earl earlier ones on that he wrote, and it's just, just beautiful if you listen to it. And it's oh, really... I forgot to switch the camera. Sorry, guys. Okay. And it's really <laughs> not that hard to play physically. It's kind of hard to read, though, isn't it? All the sharps and naturals. That's why I'm helping you through. Um, but if you can get past that, I think it's, it's pretty easy technically to play most of it. Okay, um, so let's get back to the board. And we just did our left hand. And you notice I like to separate the hands. Work on one hand at a time. It's a good way to make it easier for yourself and also give yourself a structure to your practice. Whatever you do, guys, you've got to have a structure. You can't just go in and start playing and expect it to get better. Um, it may, but you'll be, you'll be frustrated and struggle. Take a small piece and have some structure to the way you go at it. Okay, build a house. And you don't build a house in one day, right? You put, lay the foundation first, and then the next thing, the next thing. Right hand, E, F sharp, D sharp, F natural, D natural, E, B. Feel quicker there for the 16th note. One E, C, G sharp, and then that's tied. B, C, B, A, B, C, E, D. A, A, C. These are triplets. Triple it, triple it. Boom, 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 ba -dum. Now we put them together on that line. One, two, three. Two, three. Three. Okay, now as we look at the next part, now you at home should try to, once you get those two lines learned, you know, put them together. Put those two lines together. We're limited on time here, so we won't do that right now. This next part is really cool. Hear that? Isn't that cool? Listen again. That's very cool. Now, what I do, as we change the camera here, um, what I do when I have something like that, a bunch of little notes and they're fast. Now, Elton John does that. Billy Joel does that. Other uh, pianists do that, and so it's not just relegated to Chopin. In fact, all the stuff, you know, without these old classical composers, there wouldn't be Billy Joel and Elton John the way they are. Um, but what you do is you need to divide it up. Instead of looking at all those notes at once, you divide it into pieces and patterns because music is full of patterns. If you find the pattern, all of a sudden it makes it make sense to you, okay? So let's do that. If I look at the right hand right here, uh, the first three notes is just D, E, D, okay? That's my first part. Here's the next pattern. I'm going to start on C sharp, and I'm going to go up chromatically, which means every note, <coughs> excuse me, all the way up to G sharp. So that makes that a lot easier to play. When I know that that little section right there with that curved line is, and I just do my chromatic fingering, third finger on the black keys, Thumb on the white keys, except for the note F. Put my two finger. And then B, A, G, F is the last part. So three things. One, second thing, third thing. And then I have. Isn't that beautiful? And I make it rubato where I go. 
however I want to do it at the, in the moment. See, I did it a little different that time as far as the timing. Push and pull. It's like a rubber band, you know. Left hand, G, C, F. What note changes? The middle goes to B, and then it stays. So I have... Now, this always, as we change cameras, bugged me about... Um, people would say Chopin. Oh, the left hand is strict tempo, and the right hand is rubato. But you know what? I mean, I've always heard that, and you guys have heard that, too, if you play Chopin. The, no one does that. <laughs> I don't know why they say that. The left hand is not strict tempo. If you listen to people that, that play Chopin, the, the professionals, their left hand speeds up and slows down too. It's not metronomic either. But you always hear that, oh, the left hand is, is steady, never moves, and the right hand goes, pushes and pulls with the tempo. Uh-uh. Left hand as well. Both hands kind of do that. The tempo for both, if you really listen to it, that's really what happens. And so that always kind of bugged me that uh, that was always what everyone said. Anyway, so back to the board. We have more of the same chords. I won't go through them. We already did them. Right here, though, E octave, E, B, D. Okay, now what I'm doing may take you days or weeks. That's okay. The video will be here when you're ready. F sharp, D sharp. Now, this one's cool. Listen to that again. E, F, A flat, then it's chromatic. G, F sharp, F natural, then to D. So those four notes are chromatic, and if you notice that, oh, it's so much easier. And then, so here it's G sharp C, da da, and that's called a mordant. You're gonna take that B and you're gonna play three notes, B, C, B. When you see a mordant like that, you go da da da, G sharp, G sharp A. How are we doing on time, Shauna? Uh, we're about 30 minutes. We got about okay, so that, that's that's pretty good. So I'm gonna in a minute I'm gonna play the whole thing. Okay, I'm gonna turn back to the front camera though, and if there's any questions during that time, while we take a little break between, from the music, anything worth mentioning? Let me get a sip of water while we're doing that. I mean, we're just having all kinds of conversations. We don't need you. Oh, right. you don't need me? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> we do need Sounds you. Sounds like it. You're typing over there. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful we've made a switch to Chopin. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm thankful we also made a switch from Facebook to over here. It's just... Ah, uh, that's been a part of our conversation. Well, that's been going it's on. It's just a better forum. You know, it's just... Uh, you know, I'm not going to get into all the, the details, but it's just a lot easier. <laughs> on uh, YouTube to, to reach people and to, for the, in fact, the streaming's better for that oh, reason yeah. alone. Um, we always had trouble with the bandwidth on, and, and we always thought, oh, maybe it's our internet, but it wasn't. It was just always kind of grainy, but YouTube is really good about, about that. In fact, YouTube's always been my main thing, you know? I've tried other stuff, but it always seems like YouTube is the, the best for us. Phil says he really appreciates seeing he said, you guys, each week. Oh, I love seeing I you, Phil. to the whole community, it's just yeah. really wonderful. Now, hey, guys, if you are struggling at all and you you want a story to inspire you, because some, for some reason when we have, you know, when we, we see someone else that's had the same experience that we're having and then they've had success, um, it really empowers us. It gives us some, you know, some um, encouragement, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, lo we love to see that. It helps us do it ourselves. Um, Phil, you know, he's... We, you know, on Facebook, we really uh, featured him a lot, but he, uh, beginner pianist, he did uh, webpianoteacher.com, and he had a place where he was struggling, you know, just kind of felt like he wasn't going anywhere. He loved music, just, you know, just nothing was happening. It wasn't improving. It just, you know, he could play a little bit, but just, you know, felt like he was stuck. You ever felt like that? And we really convinced him to do the Easy Piano Lesson series. Uh, we need to turn the camera back on. Ah. In our, yeah, I love these cameras except for one thing, <laughs> and that's that they turn off after 30 minutes, and there's nothing you can do to stop that unless you go through all this, you know, run it through an app and all this stuff. Anyway, anyway, um, so Phil, we convinced him to, to actually go through the uh, Easy Piano Lesson series, the 50 lessons on webpianoteacher.com, and to really do it, not to just kind of skim over them, but to actually do the things that I said and not just acknowledge them and move on, which I think was what most people do. 
So he really did it, and he actually documented it. He filmed himself, and he had some struggles, and then, um, you know, doing it, but he, he overcame them, and he, he did it, and he, he did everything we s suggested in the videos, and then that was it. Now, he's just off to the races. He plays all kinds of things. And Any composes. song he wants to learn, he learns it. He composes. He bought a new, you know, keyboard. He has made his uh, attic in his house, I think, a, uh, a music room, and he, he has posters, and he really <laughs> gets into it. Okay, so we have a music question. Yeah. What does sotto voce mean? Sotto voce. <laughs> I knew you were going to say it like that. Wow, I know voce means voice. Oh, what does sotto mean? I can't remember. You can easily look it up. Yeah. I, I think it means softer voice, but I'm not, I can't remember. I know, I know voce is voice. Sotto, vo sotto voce. Shauna, you could probably look that up real quick. I am. It's just a musical Italian, you know. Our, our, our little dictionaries we all had, right? That we, so we could look up musical terms. I think it, something about softer voice or something. But you finding it? Yeah. Uh, under the breath in an undertone. Yeah. Very so it's softly. Okay. It is. So it is softer. It's sotto voce. It's like if you're talking right like this, then sotto voce would mean well, you, know, you want to do this instead. You don't want to. You know, where it's, where it's uh, a private conversation. So it's really intimate. This is kind of like, uh, oh, it says it <laughs> actually on the beats. That's yes. why they said it. As soon as I started <laughs> to say it, I thought, you know what? I bet it says sotto voce on the piece. Yeah. <laughs> Under the voice. So it's really intimate sounding. Very good. Like Waiting. you would want to play this so that somebody leans into the music. Yes. It's so personal, this composition. Um, in fact, let's do it right now. And if there's any last questions, we'll do that before we wrap it up. Here we go. Scroll up a little bit, sorry. Okay, so it ends in A there. I did wrong note there. Okay, so yeah, very personal, very intimate. And sometimes playing like that is like a whisper. It'll get people's attention. If you start whispering, you know, little kids, they really start listening, even though it's softer because it's intense. And so a lot of Chopin's mazurkas are like that. It's like, it's so personal. It's so um, just you. A lot of Beethoven's music is orchestral. Uh, you think, can't think of a symphony. You think of a symphony when you hear a Beethoven sonata. But Chopin's mazurkas are very personal, very intimate, very solo oriented so a question i missed kind of back earlier okay. was someone asked about what is a good keyboard i think they said around 500 dollars. i don't know if we're like the best people to answer that okay i feel like the community is great at answering yes finding um, like the exact keyboard right what you can well one thing you might can do is you can find a keyboard that used to be really cool <laughs> that uh that still is but maybe it's older and you can buy a used one I would not buy used unless I ch was able to check it out myself because, you know, people can beat the crud out of instruments and, they, and there could be some, some things wrong with it. But if all the keys work and, it, you know, it, the electronics seem to be okay on it, but check all the keys, um, you can get a used one if you do some searching. I'm not one who's good at that. He's looking for the bargain and looking on, you know, trying to get the used thing. Uh, if you're buying brand new, though, you know, pretty much all the, the brands make their cheaper keyboards. And the thing about the cheaper ones is that it's so cheap now for them to put the um, software in it that uh, you, know, you can get a pretty good instrument for 500. Um, Yamaha makes one. In fact, I have one in my practice closet <laughs> that was, I think, 500. It's a Yamaha. It's just a, you know, a cheapy. It has a good piano sound on it. That's all I'm looking for. Keys are, the action's decent. Um, Casio, I'm sure, makes one. 
any of those are going to be about the same, but I would just go check them out, you know. Um, but Yamaha, Casio, what's another one, Sean? One of those. Um, I, I don't think I Roland don't makes a makes a cheap one like that. But but Yamaha and Casio and there's one other one I can't think of. Anyway, those are the two big ones, Yamaha and Casio. You well, just want to make sure it's got, like you said, weighted keys and a decent action. I mean, yeah, weighted keys. Some of these uh, more expensive keyboards are like organ keys. Oh, I hate that. Don't do that. You're a piano player. In fact, if even if you weren't, um, you know, you, you want to exercise your fingers, and you have those keys that aren't weighted. They just don't do you any good because you're gonna have to play on piano eventually at some point. And um, it's just always easier to go from a piano, a weighted key, to a non-weighted key than it is to play on weighted keys and then all of a sudden have to play on weighted keys. So I would definitely uh, get, get a good weighted action on your keyboard. Um, okay, anything else, Shauna? I think we're good. I think we're good. So I'll post this sheet on uh, my community tab on my YouTube channel. And any more comments you have, because we keep watching the comments, even if you weren't able to comment during the live stream, um, post another comment, you know, after the fact, and we'll, we'll try to get back to you on that. You guys, a lot of fun. We'll be back here next Monday at 11.30 Possibly. a.m. Our son has a golf tournament. We oh, haven't okay. talked about that yet. We'll, do, well maybe we'll just do a, wherever yeah, we are, know. we'll just we'll see. check in. <laughs> like but, I said, people, we fly by the seat of our pants. Yes, but generally... You know, Mondays, 11.30 a.m. Central Time. We're here for a live lesson. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Go Bears. Talk to you later.